When managing toxicities related to TKIs, I think one of the most important things to remember and one of the most important things to point out to your patients is that in a lot of cases, the worst side effects occur very early on and over time those start to ease up and they start to become much more tolerable. So if we are able to support a patient through that early time point, um, whether it's steroids for a rash or a diuretic for fluid retention, whatever it may be, nausea medications, that the supportive care early on is crucial. It's not always necessary to change treatment because of, of toxicities, because they, they can get better over time. In some cases, we may need to dose reduce. In some cases, we may need to temporarily hold the drug. Um, but in most cases, we can support people through that, that tough time in the beginning, and they can end up doing quite well as time goes on. In regard to the cardiovascular complications from TKIs, that data is, is still coming out. The two, that, the two TKIs that have been most closely associated with cardiovascular toxicity, of course, are nilotinib and panatinib. And the mechanisms by which either of those drugs cause cardiovascular toxicity has not really been clearly defined. But in a lot of cases, it looks like it may actually be a different mechanism from each drug. So the comprehension in regard to cardiovascular toxicity People know that it, that it exists. Um, not everybody, or not most people, don't really have great data to tell us what to do to try to mitigate that. So getting a cardiologist involved and doing what we can do to decrease risks in the same way that we would with someone who's not on a TKI, I think is absolutely essential. But at the end of the day, we have a lot more research to do to really fully understand the mechanism by which these drugs cause cardiovascular complications and then what we can do about it to decrease that risk. In general, um, we try to have good communication with the community physician. So we at MD Anderson receive a number of referrals from uh, outside of Houston, outside of the state for patients with chronic phase especially great patients with last phase, accelerated phase, chronic myeloid leukemia. In general, our policy has been is when we see the patients initially and we start them usually on one of our frontline protocols for CML, uh, we will call or email the community physician, let him know that the patient's enrolled on a protocol. And we actually, uh, since we treat about 80 to 85% of our patients on clinical trials, have a standardized uh, clinical trial uh, paperwork that we would send to the local physician that usually includes uh, what kind of trial the patient is on, the abstract of the trial, and then what labs are needed on that patient at what frequency. And usually those are requested to be uh, faxed to us so that we can keep it in our um, FDA binder. And so in general, especially on the protocols, the communication has been very good. In my practice, I usually give my email or phone number to the community physicians as well so that if they have a question, they can reach me uh, quickly. But especially in chronic diseases such as CML or other diseases like myelofibrosis polycythemia vera that we see a lot, I think it's very important uh, to make that initial communication with the community physician either on or off trial uh, and also to let the community physician know that we are really the consultants and we will be helping to monitor the patient from a distance, but really they are still going to be the primary doctor who the patient will be going back to, who will be the front line to deal with any emerging toxicities, and that they can reach us, but uh, that they really have ownership of the patient. And I think that works beneficial in, in, in two ways. It makes the community physicians also feel comfortable that you know these patients are not going to be staying or taken over by MD Anderson or any other major institution. We're just being the consultant, so they will continue to follow the patients. And I think it also makes uh, it easier for us because we see a lot of referrals, so we do not have the bandwidth to become the primary for these patients. So I think in chronic diseases, even more than acute leukemias, uh, it's very important to have a very good communication with these physicians.